Hello, welcome to another video on GPROMS. Today we are going to look at a block flow reactor with axial dispersion. So the equation that describes the um, mass balance is uh, given by this equation where you have our uh, dispersion coefficient multiplied by this squared C dx squared minus U dc dx minus kc equals zero. So this problem, um, you know, is this is a second order differential equation in space because we have x not in time. So when you have this kind of problem, uh, this is uh, a distributed model. So why? Because there is uh, a variation along a special domain. So there is variation in space, um, not in time in this case. So when you have just time dependence of variables. So when you have derivative with respect to time only in your model, you have um, a lumped model. But when you have um, derivative with respect to space, uh, you can also have with respect to time in addition to spatial uh, dependence of, 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 of derivative, uh, you, ha you have uh, a distributed uh, model. So when you have a distributed model, you'll be given boundary condition. That is what is happening at the inlet. So information about what is happening at the inlet of the um the reactor or the tube or whatever you're looking at, and at the e exit of that um tube or reactor. So in this problem, we have the uh the boundary condition at the inlet. So what is happening at the inlet and what is happening at the outlet? So at the inlet x, which is the domain, the axial domain that that the concentration uh, changes along, is zero x is zero at the inlet at the beginning and x is equal to the full length of the um of the tube uh or the or the reactor at the exit okay so we're seeing is the in inlet concentration so the concentration at the inlet l is the, the full length of the reactor and um, we have d the dispersion coefficient given as this the u which is um the velocity is given as 100 meters per hour. And you also have the kinetic rate constant given by two uh, per hour and then length 100 meters C in 100 moles per liter. So how do we solve this problem in GPROMS? To solve this problem in GPROMS, you know, we need to define what we call distribu distribution domain. So distribution domain is used whenever you have a distributed model. So that will allow you to specify the domain, the axial domain, okay? So the spatial domain, basically, sometimes it's not just axial, it could be radial, it could be any other um, domain you are looking at, provided it's in space. So you need to we need to define the distribution domain, then we set um, the discretization method that we want to use uh, in the process, and, and that will aid. Okay, let's see how we can do this in GPUBS. Okay, now this is the um, the file I've created for the model. So make the make it quicker. So I decide to um, create the file. So we have the variable type so in concentration because that's the only variable that we have. And then in the model, I have the the model. So here, these are the parameters that we have: the dispersion coefficient, velocity. Reaction rate constant and, and the length. They, they declare them as real. Then the distribution domain. So this is something new here. So it's axial, defined as axial, that's the, the 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 x direction um the reactor as then the starting value. So start at x equals zero up to the full length of the reactor. So that's what we are looking at. So we want to see how the concentration varies along the full length uh, of the reactor. Then we declare a variable C in, so which is the inlet concentration as dependent on you know, concentration. That's the variable type. Here, remember, C in is just the concentration at the beginning, so it's not changing, it's just that value. Then uh, C as the concentration at any location in the reactor. So we, de we declare that as a distribution. Uh, over axial domain, so this is this concentration will be changing along the axial domain, then of the variable time concentration. This one, okay. 
So distribution is like the larger umbrella under which array sits. So array is also when you have more than one, something um, a variable that is not just one. So you use array, so you use distribution when you have other than um, prime, when you have spatial uh, dependence. Now, the boundary condition given in the equation, you have the velocity multiplied by C in. At the inlet, so the main thing you want to remember here is at the inlet, uh, X equals zero. So we specify X equals zero. You must always do that because C is a distribution on the axial domain. Anytime we use C in an equation, we must indicate the location where we are. So that's why well, if we are looking at everything along the length, so we just put uh, something that, that keep track of the position um, where we are. Then partial is used when, you remember when we have distributed model in, in G-Pumps, we, if, if we have um, um, first order derivative uh, in, in space is treated as partial because concentration intrinsically has time dependence in, in, in G-Pumps. So this concentration also has time dependence intrinsically in G prompts, even though that is not important to us. So that is why G prompt would treat C as having dependence in time by default. So any other dependence it has will then make it partial in G prompt. So that's why we use partial keyword. So partial, then C at X equals zero, then axial. So it's that's with respect to the axial domain. Remember it's D, C, D, X. Okay, then the outlet, CL, so we are using L at the outlets because X corresponds to L, the full length of the reactor at the outlet. So the derivative with respect to X equals zero at the exit. Now the equation that we have is this. So if it, then what we need a for loop to go through each dis discretized domain. Remember the way the numerical solver solved the problem is that the domain is discretized and the equation is solved within, at, within each slice. Okay, so this Z is an iterator that goes through each slice of the domain, but excluding the um, the inlet. So vertical bar plus excludes the inlet. Why? Because we already specified the, the equation that applies at the inlet. Then vertical bar minus eliminates uh, the outlet, that's CL, so this location, because we already specified uh, what is going to happen at that location okay then we write the equation d partial to remember we have second order derivative so that's why axial is used twice here yeah? so z is specified because we are tracking different locations along the length of the reactor then cz axial to say you know this is just a uh, first order in the equation in the problem statement so k c z equals zero so this is the equation now let's go to this is the model to the process, uh, the first thing to do is to create a copy of the of the model. So an instance of the model, which we call reactor here, set all the parameters. This is quite easy. The only thing that is new here is that uh, we need to set the, the axial domain that we created in the model. So we are saying that we need to use backward finite difference method with other one and 50 points. So that one is fine because it's a simple model. So you can also have you use order two, and depending on how, how complicated the, the, the model is. Then we assign um, C in, because if you go back to the model, uh, there are basically not two variables because this is not just one variable, it's a, this is a distribution. So depending on how many points that we, we have, um, then you have this C. This C will correspond to the number of points that we set, and C in is just one value. So this, we count the number of variables. So basically, C in, that's this is one plus the, the number of uh, axial, uh, the number of points that we specify, which is basically fifty, uh, in 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 the um, process. Then the equation this will match that. Remember, we have as much as uh, the full length into up to the full length, which we correspond to this equation. We excluded the boundaries, so we are given the equation. So this will take care of that. So we need to specify this in order to make the degree of freedom zero. 
Okay, so this equation, match, this variable will, will match these equations in, in, in terms of degree of freedom. And this, we need to specify it. So that value. And we have the value in the, in the problem statements given. So that is why we need a sign here. So we need to assign that uh, C in value. Okay, that's all we need. We don't need a uh, schedule. So because we don't have, we are not tracking the concentration in time. There is no um, variation along um, uh, with respect to time in the model. So that's why schedule is not important here because nothing will change in time. So if you run it, so what do we get? Um, we run the model. So if I use the reporting interval of one, for example, then I have the results upon result trajectory, reactor variables. So if I look at the concentration, then I can see how the concentration varies along the axial domain. So if I look at the graph, so that is the, the result, okay? So that's it for this video. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and um, click the notification button so that you get um, notified when I release new video. So thank you very much for listening and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.